interesting thing happening in Buddhism right now and the modern age. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who is the political and religious leader of the Tibetan people, um, at least you know, from the Tibetan standpoint. From China's standpoint, there's an entire political thing going on. There's a lot of arguing, so people get very upset about those kind of things. But, in my understanding, he is the political and religious leader of the Tibetan people, and a very high icon in Tibetan Buddhism. He's also very well known in Buddhism in general, whether it's Mahayana or Theravada or, or in, in Zen Buddhism. Everybody knows who the Dalai Lama is. They've known him since the 50s, 60s, since when he, when he first left Tibet and ended up in Dharmsala. Well, now they're starting to, because of this COVID thing and also because of uh, just the way the world is now, we're, we're looking at each other through these, these camera lenses and screens, is he's been doing some of his teachings online actually online. Now many of them have been filmed and placed online before and we've seen that and now he's planning on doing what's called a, um, uh, a transmission of that uh, uh, spiritual teaching which generally in the Tibetan sense has to have a one-on-one, -on -one, a very private, intimate relationship with your Guru. Now that's one of the things in, in Tibetan Buddhism is there, there. There's a lot of talk about keeping the, the the guru right at the top of the head. You're like always keep it right here. Whenever you see them, uh, take something, even a, a picture or a um, a statue or some kind of icon. They will always. I don't have anything here with me right now, but uh, uh, I was going to try to find something. But they would put it at the top of their head to show that blessing and to show that reverence for it. And there's, so there's a big reference with that that interpersonal relationship of the guru and the student. Now with this, we're seeing the Dalai Lama basically you log in and you can get this empowerment. And uh, there's a lot of people, there's like there's some monks, uh, Orgyen Tobgyal, and others, other Lamas, Rinpoches, and Geishas, and all these guys, and women, you know, some of the nuns are, are very upset about this because of that relationship is being uh, breached. Now this is kind of the same thing that happened early on in Buddhism, because in Buddhism, they went from only the spoken word and memorizing the sutras by by direct transmission to actually writing them down. Now there was a huge upheaval about that and, and of course every time that we've had changes in technology or changes in, in culture there's been uh, resistance to that. Now right or wrong, that's, that's a debate for later, but one of the things that we noticed did happen, that happened when people were starting to um, teach Westerners, for example. We had Japanese and Chinese monks come here to the United States. They would start teaching Westerners because Westerners were very interested and, 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 and very and enthralled by Buddhism. And they, they received a lot of flack. I mean, even to the point of, I mean, when I was early learn, learning, um, there was a lot of things that were kind of like, well, you, you're not going to be learning that stuff. You're not going to be learning about that. You're going to learn the basic stuff over here and you can sit quietly in the corner and meditate. But we'll not teach you any of this other deeper things. And there's there's still kind of that going on. But that's also to to support and, and keep things quote unquote pure. And one of the things we, th that happens, you start to see, is you start to see a lot of people with money can go ahead and just become a Rinpoche. Because you give someone enough money, they all of a sudden they, they recognize you as the as a Rinpoche, as a reincarnated a high master or something like that. I mean, the examples are, I think, um, Steven Seagal was actually named as a Rinpoche reincarnation of a Buddhist master. So, it, which is kind of weird because, you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I don't have all that privy information. But as the basic Buddhist we go through, it does kind of smell of a little bit of this. You know, there's a lot of money that goes on in there. And a lot of people get their their accolades and their, their, their things by just paying someone. You know, it's, it's actually not that hard to do. I've, I've seen it happen. Now, for us, for me, for when I did my ordination and practice, it took a few years because I was doing it piecemeal. I did very little at a time. And, um, you know, like I tried to immerse myself as best I could, but it took longer. And the educational process is important. Now, also, I think, I do think that the one-on-one -on -one personal relationship, you know, like, like sitting with them, because there's so much you get from from communication. I mean, we can only see so much. We know that words are only about 20% of what we're communicating. You see me, but I don't see you. And so I can't react to your responses to things and, and get that sense about you. And there's also this a very interesting energetic or meditative sense about when we're communicating. 
And I think that will get lost. And so I don't know. I mean, you know, the Dalai Lama makes the Dalai Lama's decisions. You know, I mean, I'm sure he has a council that, you know, says this or that, yay and nay, and all those kind of things. But I mean, he's kind of the top notch when it comes to those things. I have a lot of, during this time of pandemic and time of stay at home orders and stay safe orders and all this kind of stuff, I've had a lot of my. Um, people in my community, my little sangha group, that have asked for online teachings. Let's do online meditations. I just don't see the point of doing an online meditation where I sit and watch you sit. Um, I can pretend to sit and watch you sit. I can put up a, a picture of me sitting and then you can sit in front of a picture of you sitting. It doesn't really matter because we're not getting that that same breath. We're not breathing the same air. And that's a that's a weird thing these days. Now I know that for me it's a personal choice because I'm not used to this kind of venue, really. I mean, the, the, the Zoom meeting kind of thing and the, the multiple pictures of people is very hard because I spend all my time looking at the screen trying to find different um, people and see what's going on. And, you know, I get very distracted. It's very hard. So it's, and it takes a little bit of practice for that thing. Now, I know the Dalai Lama is has been doing teachings to thousands of people at once all the time. So he's very used to working in mass, having film on him, you know, having cameras facing right at him and following him around and those kind of things. But even you see in the documentary that was done about the daily life of the Dalai Lama, I'll try and put it in the links down below if I can find it. Um, there's a point where he comes out brushing his teeth and he's got a towel around his waist and he comes out and they're already there and he just shakes his head and walks away. And there's other time when he, uh, he was eating and they keep asking him a question, and he has to finally stop them. He's like, hey, this is time for eating, later time for questions. If I talk and eat at the same time, I could choke. <laughs> so he was very, and he's very jovial about things, and he's very, you know, very simple about things, and that's that's the way he is. He, he, he understands that simplicity. Now, this fellow, uh, Orgen Tobial, uh, he was, he's, he's been a part of the inner workings of the Tibetan religion for a long time. Um, he uh, left, he was born in 1951, he left, uh, I don't know, he's about 69 now, I think. And he's been with the parliament of the Tibetan people, so he's, he's, hel he's kind of helped them create their new world. And a lot of them have sent refugees from Tibet and got them to other places like the United States and Canada and, and England and, and other countries and, and even in the, in the um, southern America and stuff like that. And that's to help people not only help them out in their lives, but also to spread the Tibetan Buddhism and help it survive, because it was almost extinct. It, it nearly, if, if the Dalai Lama had been stopped, or let's, I don't even know how to put that, if, if the Dalai Lama had been controlled by the, the Chinese government, then probably we would not see Tibetan Buddhism at all. Now, that's, that's an opinion. I don't know. I mean, there's so many things that have gone on. I mean, I'm sure there's other people who would have stepped forward. But he is kind of the one who kind of caught the limelight. There's a lot of, of movie stars that you'll see pictures of him with. And there's movie stars who follow him. You know, Richard Gere. Um, I think uh, Boy George, too, I think. I can't remember. But there's a few of them that have actually, like, really taken on that and um, helped him get that message out. And to the point that now people think the Dalai Lama is the Pope. And he's not. He's he's a a leader, he's a lineage holder of a few lineages of Tibetan Buddhism. He has nothing to do with um Theravada Buddhism or Zen Buddhism or Son Buddhism or, or any of these Chan Buddhism, anything like that. He has that almost nothing to do with it other than being the 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 face of Buddhism on Time Magazine and People Magazine and all these places and, and being seen with a lot of very famous people. He's not the Pope. Okay, so, I mean, he has, he has quite a bit of influence, obviously. Um, I mean, completely, a lot of influence. I mean, I, I spent time trying to see him when I was in uh, Southern California. He came to the to one of the universities and we were able to see him there. Um, but uh, I didn't get close enough to get pictures or anything like that. I didn't see the problem with it. I don't know. But, so I think that, that in Buddhism we're seeing things change, and everything changes, right? Everything always changes. It's hard for change, but there has to be a dialogue. So hopefully he can take that in consideration, and, and somehow they can come to a middle ground. You know, there's a lot of people very upset about the, the transmission of these empowerments that are very tantric and very secret person-to-person -person 
uh, information and and even like energy transfers. It's, it's very esoteric, you know, much different than the very practical uh, like Zen Buddhism. But even that is very, that's a very private thing. So when you go into session in a Zen temple, you know, you, you, you meet with your sensei, your, your teacher, that's a private thing. You don't discuss that. Look at Transcendental Meditation. It's a private mantra that is yours and you're only supposed to use it when you need to use it not willy-nilly and not tell everybody because then it, it does lose some power words do have power and um the 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 ability for us to transfer that information i believe should be very personalized that makes it more um precious also so anyway, this is uh, Remy Sean over the center path. This is kind of like going over like you know, modern day stuff that we're going over here. I'll, I'll post this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more. I will be following this story and other stories like that, and we'll talk about them. And, and leave me a comment, a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about that. If you had transmission, let me know because I want to, I you know, like, like how important was it to you? If you've had session, you know, you've done that. I mean, like, think about if it was done on Skype. Right? Or, or on FaceTime or something like that. How different that would be. It's just not the same, man. Um, I don't know. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing. But go ahead and, uh, like I said, subscribe. And go on the centerpath.org. Look up our cheat sheet if you want to follow that class. But uh, anyway, you guys take care of yourselves. And, you know, may all of them involved live long and happy lives. May you live a long and happy life. May you be free from worry. May you be free from suffering. May you be free from affliction. Find it easy to take care of yourself.